quantum physics is now moving towards securing the idea that in some kind of a mathematical superspace, all particles in the universe maintain a kind of super state of connectivity called Bell's non-local connectivity. Uh, what this means to me is that the imagination is uh, literally another dimension, a dimension that is non-local. Now, the mind, uh, the animal mind, the human mind, the Paleolithic mind, evolved as a um, master coordinator of sensory data coming into the body from the senses about the level of threat and danger in immediate three-dimensional space. That's the mind's evolutionary function, to preserve the body, to preserve the genetic stream of unfolding by detecting and avoiding threat. And so our minds have evolved in the same way that water takes the shape of its container. Our minds have evolved to take the, take the shape of three-dimensional space and time under cultural, uh, under cultural and environmental pressure. Well, we've paid a huge price for this. The entire enterprise of civilization has been about something else. The felt presence nearby, ineffable, unsayable, but uncannily penetrating of beauty, of mathematical connectivity, of supernatural power. And so these are the things, the exploration of which, the singing about of which, make us human beings. The exploration of the universe of the unseen is the business of human beings. It's why we are the way we are. It's why we will be the way we will be. It's how we got where we are. How is it done? It's done by dissolving ordinary cultural boundaries, by perturbing consciousness, and by paying careful attention to the results and attempting to build models therefrom. Now, in the last few thousand years in the West, this enterprise has been tamed by priestcraft, which combines the enterprise with judicious politicking and a certain amount of ass-licking. Before that, the enterprise was untainted by such secular concerns. It was full force forward into the unknown. And this is the great era of shamanism. And what is shamanism but philosophy with a hands-on attitude? Philosophy not made around the campfire, but philosophy based on the acquisition of extreme experience.